Hello Wargamer, this is me Khan from Tabletop Banter and in today's video I'm going to give you a little overview as to how I've painted my test model for the 24 hour live stream Iron Warriors. Um, now this isn't exactly a tutorial because I won't be obviously doing the painting right here uh, but what I am going to go is go over my the paints I've chosen basically, the process and the application of the paints and um, I've got a couple of extra things that aren't paints that I'll include as well uh, which I think add quite a lot to the miniature that you see in front of you. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I am going to bring up the miniature. I'm just going to blue tack him onto a piece of cork first. Um, and then we can have a bit of a closer look at him um, through the camera because I have some, some focus adjusting stuff going on here. So this is the uh, Iron Warriors Tactical Marine that I did as a test paint job for the 24 hour live stream. The idea was that it was going to be uh, replicatable, so I could just paint, well, 30 of these fellas uh, in a sitting um, and still look okay. So I'm still pretty pleased with the uh, the effect that I've gotten from it. Uh, I think the, there's a couple of things I'm changing, which is why I've got some additional paints in here that you will see. Um, and there's a couple of things that I will hopefully refine um, when it comes to the actual stream. Uh, but this is the miniature uh, that I that I have painted um, and hopefully I'll have another whole pretty much well a 1500 point army of these guys for sure I might even bump it to 2k in due course um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop him back here I'm just going to go through the stages I'll take him off his little cork base I'm just going to go through the stages as to how I got from my primed uh, my primed iron warrior tactical marine to where we are now with him and uh, it'll give you a little insight into what I'm doing on the day so obviously it got primed and the first thing that went on it was lead belcher so this was a basically a base coat over the whole miniature now for the stream I'm going to be doing a couple of sub assemblies um, first things first the shoulder pads will stay off and secondly the guns will remain off as well uh, I'm going to paint those separately on bits of cork with um, paper clips in them because it will just make my life that much easier when it comes to painting the uh, especially the shoulder pads I'll be able to add a bit more visual interest to them because to me they kind of um, they don't let the model down but they could be better and it won't take that much extra effort either so imagine the shoulder pads are off and the gun is off as well so I'm going to base the whole model off of its base so he'll be uh, on a little MDF disc that I will paint him on and he'll be primed white well primed light grey Vallejo airbrush primer then lead belcher goes on first uh, this covers the whole model then I take iron breaker and I do sort of a, a top-down highlight, so it, let's say Lead Belcher covers 100%, um, so I go around the whole model. The uh, the Iron Breaker gets shot down on it sort of, I'll say it like a 25% coverage. It's hard to say in angles because I guess it's sort of like um, if I just grab my airbrush. Ah, it's plugged in at the moment, that's a bit of a shitter. If I just grab a brush to show you, this is the kind of angle that I will be spraying at. Uh, so only really catching that the higher areas and leaving shadows and, and shades in the recesses. Uh, now once that's done, um, the next thing I'll be doing sort of on the whole is the shoulder pads and obviously the metallic systems will be the same on the gun as it is the body. Uh, now I use um, Army Painter Matte Black because it's cheaper and at the end of the day to me a black paint is a black paint. Um, it is a case of what consistency you like working with. I've thinned down this matte black. I like using it through the airbrush. Um, so that is exactly how I will approach the shoulder pads. Um, so that's the next thing on the to-do list, like getting those done, and then obviously hand painting the um, these little bits here on the sides of the backpacks. Um, so those are the next sort of things that get done. And then the highlights will come in with dark grey uh, from Vallejo Model Color, uh, and that basically will be providing sort of the highlight here that you that I haven't done on this particular model, and that's one of the changes. Uh, because like I said, at the end of the day, what's a quick airbrush highlight? Um, it'll add that much more when I do it and, and hopefully be worth the time. Now, after that, I'm not necessarily going in order of the paint stacked up here, by the way. Um, after that, I'll obviously do the black on the guns, get all that done to the same standard. And from there, I will keep, obviously keep the sub-assemblies going, but I will be using the Winter Streaking Grime from AK Interactive. It's a, um, an, like an, I think it's an oil-based or enamel-based something or other. 
And basically you have to, well, you don't have to, but how I do it is I paint effectively the whole model. I th you've got to thin it down and you thin it down with um, artists white spirit. So I use the Windsor Newton stuff because it's easily um, available to me. Um, but you use this and a mix of this and the winter streaking grime at the back there uh, to create a pretty um, a low viscosity liquid. So it, I think that's the right word. It's not very viscous, it's very runny. Uh, it goes into the recesses really well. Um, and then you, once that has dried, take a cotton bud, just a regular cotton bud like that, and you dip that in some artist spirit. I, I siphon it off so I don't put, so this is perfectly clear. And then I've got some that's got a, probably a tiny taint, um, but n not, not noticeable. And I basically take away the excess, leaving it smooth armor panels. Smooth surfaces are still smooth and they have no pooling. And uh, then the grime uh, wash effectively stays in the recesses, it darkens it down a bit and um, brings to the fore the, the details of the model. Um, so once I've done those processes, I mean, not the, 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 the wash will take quite a while, I know that much, to, to dry, which is fine um, because at the end of the day I've got a bit of time. So whilst the plan at the moment, whilst the uh, streaking grime is drying, it's onto the basing. So the basing here I have... Um, used the Citadel um, or the Games Workshop Sector Mechanicus bases, I believe they're called. Um, they sort of look like a Zone Mortalis board or a, a hive ship or whatever you want to call it, you know, a, 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 a battle barge. And um, I wanted a bit of a colour to sort of accent the model, but I didn't want it to stand out too much. So this sort of blue-grey is done using the Fenrisian, Fenrisian grey layer paint uh, from Citadel and I really like the colour. It was a test model, so I did a, a few test colours on some bits of paper, and I was just like, well, what, what clashes against this guy's armour and what complements it? And I couldn't really find anything that I liked, and then I literally just, out of the blue, picked up this Fenrisian grey, and I was like, oh, that looks like a blue-grey. That's kind of what I want. And it just turned out to be the right colour. So I was really happy with that. So it starts with this, and then obviously you can see here, I've gone in with Lead Belcher uh, to paint in the metallic parts. Uh, once, oh, and you obviously I've added some sand in here. So this, this, this rough texture here is literally just Wilco's impeccable bird sand. And I just wanted to add a bit of texture to the base so it wasn't just out the packet. Um, and it, like I say, it just makes it slightly visually different uh, from a, a regular Sector Mechanicus base. So all my bases will have the same treatment. Gluing the sand down, priming it, and then going in with the airbrush, Fenrisian Grey, to get a smooth layer of that colour. Then hand brush uh, work for the lead belcher. Well, once I've done that, and it's all dried. I then go in again with the winter streak and grime because again, I like the way the oils interact with recesses particularly, and you can clean up these surfaces, these flat surfaces with relative ease, which adds a lot. Um, so once that's dried, I, and I make sure it's dry in the sand as well, um, the next part of the process is not done with paint, it's done with powders. So I have the two following Humbrol weathering powders. So let me just move this back and put these in here. So I started doing the uh, Dark Earth. Oh, you can't see what it's called there, but this is the Dark Earth from Weather, uh, from Humbrol. And I basically went in and added that to sort of the sand uh, gravel look. Just sort of that crumpled, it's, it's a very dark, uh, muddy brown. Um, and I kind of wanted it to be sort of, uh, I don't know, rubble basically. Uh, I know you might say there's no rubble on a ship, but my thought process wasn't this was on a ship, to be quite honest. It's on uh, some kind of industrial uh, high uh, planet or some kind of industrial militia planet that I'm making militia allies for that will have a similar basing scheme um, where they're very heavy on the tech and it's got that mining uh, floor grating scene, sort of like Necrom Necromunda-esque, if you like. Um, and then I went in with the Humbrol um, Rust weathering powder, as you can see just here, just to add a little bit of visual interest to the metallics. Um, and I, I went fairly heavy because I had the intention of matte varnishing and I did and I'm really glad that I, you have to go a little bit heavier if you're going to matte varnish because it just knocks away that um, different texture and, and that different, um, the, the harshness of the colour gets knocked back when you matte varnish your powders. Uh, but I'm really pleased with how it came out. Obviously a black rim for the base. So this will be done in various stages side by side. Um, at that point, probably, the basing will be my whilst the model is drying thing. And then whilst when the the basing is all there and got the oils on it, hopefully I go back to the models and the models are dry from the oils and I can go and work on those 
And then when the next step is drying, like a varnish perhaps, I go back to the bases. Um, but with the model itself, the next step for me is adding the gold trim. So, or gla glazing first, really, uh, the shoulder pads whilst everything else is drying as well. So I take my matte black and I do, I think it works out to roughly one or two drop, I think one drop of bl matte black paint from Army Painter that has already been a bit thinned. Um, just so it's of a decent consistency for brushwork and airbrushing. And then about a teaspoon of um, airbrush thinner. So I know a teaspoon is a really poor measure, obviously, but um, that's what it is. It's a teaspoon of airbrush thinner, basically. Uh, and um, it works out to um, basically making this nice black glaze that ties in the, uh, the light greys and the dark blacks into sort of one colour. Uh, one continuous flow of colour. So um, that will be on the shoulder pads, obviously, and uh, that will be happening simultaneous to other bits and bobs. Um, then they will get their Retributor Armour trim. So it's very simple. It is just a fine detail brush, being particularly careful, and going around uh, basically the, just the trim of the shoulder pads, which then gets a Reichland uh, Flesh Shade um, just to dull it down a bit. And I think I then went back into the higher areas, so you can see like these sort of these raised parts of the shoulder pads here um, and the corners and I went back in and did uh, the retributor armor again just to lift up the uh, the shine on the the trim uh, once that's all done I decided that I actually wanted to do a bit of freehand work nothing fancy honestly when I say it's freehand it's a bit of a cop out for freehand um, but you may have noticed on the on the miniature oh if my thumb's not in the way there is a little V or a little you know Roman numeral 5 in, on the right knee and all of them will be getting that and it'll be their, their I won't say chapter symbol but uh, their grand company symbol um, and the, I just base, I basically base coated it with the matte black and then went in with Avalanche Sunset took about three to four layers I've thinned it down slightly uh, th three to four thin layers over the black just to get a solid color went back in with matte black to paint the V um, and then added more uh, added a, a tiny amount of the um, oil paint still um, so this was done after the fact. I will probably do the freehand prior to oil washes anyway, um, but that's sort of where I'm going with that. Now, once that's all done, I will then uh, put together the sub-assemblies and start doing my other weathering. So obviously we've already got powders on there. We've got the oil weathering, but lastly is a bit of sponge weathering. So for sponge weathering, if I've got one to hand, I will pick it up. I use the little sponges that you get for a small, small makeup set from Tiger... Tiger Tiger, I think it's called. The Shop Tiger. I can't remember. There you go. It's a small circular sponge used for makeup. Um, you can have applicators, but I prefer just using my hands for this because you get a bit more control. Um, so I use that, and you can see, obviously, recently I've used it. So I use Vallejo model color Hull Red um, as this first, as the first little bit of sponging. So it's very light. It's just to add... Um, little chips here and there you can see some scuffing on the knee pad and on the shoulder pad there you can see it as well so I do that first and then very lightly grab my lead belcher put it on the other corner and just go over the whole red um, so it looks like it's been chipped away a little bit um, it's not too bright and it doesn't stand out that much but it adds a little bit of visual interest to the model um, and stops it being uh, too clean now obviously with the oil washes and some powders on the base and that it doesn't look too too clean but um, that was the hope there. So the next thing I will do is I will sit down and paint the lenses. So for the lenses, it's really simple, to be honest with you. Um, and it's, just, it's not cheating, but it feels like it is. So I go back in with, I, well, I basically I put a, a little highlight of Iron Breaker inside the eye lens with a fine detail brush. And then I just paint Spirit Stone Red over the eyes. And it gives a very sort of metallic look to the lens. Um, it makes it look like there could be something behind it rather than a flat colour, than a, um, like a proper flat colour. It adds that sort of um, or gem-like quality that you might get with a lens. It's super simple. It's very quick and repeatable. Um, and if you're patient and you use a fine detail brush, it's much easier to do than trying to paint the classic uh, three uh, all red, three quarters light red, one quarter really light red and then a white dot in the opposite corner you know so it's a quicker more effective way of getting it done i'm not saying it's the best way to do it but what i will say is it's going to be the best way for me to do it for a 24-hour live stream because uh, obviously i have a lot to paint 
and I will be tired by the end and lenses come at the end so I want something that is simple and repeatable. And that's pretty much the crux of it with this whole uh, paint scheme to be fair. So I'll just stick him back on his cork and bring him a little closer to the uh, to the screen as I ramble away the last parts of this video. Um, so yeah that, that was pretty much it really. That's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you what the plan was for my tactical marines. Oh, you can also see I spirit stoned the uh, the lens there on the or the little red dot sight on his bolt gun. But um, I wanted to show you basically what I was hoping to achieve in the 24 hours. Um, so there that is. I'm really happy with it actually. I, like I say, for a test model it was quite quite fun and pretty effective. It was the similar method I used to my kill team. Like I say, I've got a couple of changes to add. I've got the freehand extra in there and the basing I'm super happy with. So that's probably my favourite thing of this whole model is that base uh, because it's got the two powders on there, it's got the oil wash on there and it's got some basic brush and airbrush skills. So it's really sort of it's made me very feel very good about where I'm at in the hobby at the moment. I'm I'm not saying I'm an exceptional painter or, or hobbyist in general, but knowing that I'm starting to progress using multiple techniques rather than the classic base coat wash edge highlight, uh, it's really positive for me, and it means that I'm starting to improve. Um, like I say, this is a quick paint job. This is not going to be anything other than a, a tabletop standard, really. Um, but it's something I'd like to do. Um, and something Harry and I will be doing, obviously. And it, it brings to light how easy the heresy is to get into, uh, nowadays anyway. Because obviously before it was all resin kits and so forth. But what I have here, and what I'll do is I'll just bring in uh, the extras, if you like. The, the two powders, um, the paints. If you look what you have here, this, these are all the paints I used. Plus airbrush thinner. All of them. To create this model. Um, now, I'm not like I'm saying. I'm not saying this is a masterpiece, but what I'm saying is that if you have a limited paint collection and you go out and buy Kauf, as long as you get the right paints, you'll be on your way. Like, it's it's not a difficult thing to get into the heresy. Um, so Harry and I were doing 1,500 points in 24 hours. Um, now those 1,500 points, in terms of model count, the actual models that have been purchased so far. If you, because I'm using extra parts as well, so Harry's doing it a bit cheaper than I am, but I wanted to use some extra parts, uh, extra parts which I actually have to hand, and we'll show you a bit of as well. Um, so I'm using extra parts. I'm using Kalth, and I'm using ten extra men. So for me, it's costing um, was it 72 for Kalth? Uh, 18 brings us to 90 extra parts. 100. And Ten, probably all in about 115 pounds, maybe 120 if we include all the postages for the models uh, and the bases. Then, if you bring in paints and so forth, um, you start to um, yes, it starts to increase, but it probably gets to about 150. But this 150 quid is for a whole 1500 point army, and you could take that further. You could make it more cost efficient. I am almost certain. Um, and just to show the parts that I'll be using, I have here the uh, Pop Goes the Monkey Stalker like bolt rifle effectively. It's the, wow, it's very difficult to show off uh, with a convoluted background. I don't even know how a hand's going to do. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can see there, uh, it's like a sniper rifle. I'm using it for some Seekers because I, I like the look of Seekers and I thought that they would have maybe something a bit more special than a bolt gun. Um, so including those and all the models and all the paints, not necessarily the airbrush, although if I included all the airbrush and the booth, etc., you'd still only really be looking at about 250 quid to get in. 300 at a push. But you don't need all of that. You do not need all of those things. You just need the models and the paints at the end of the day. Uh, or obviously brushes and water. You could, you could do heresy. I'm going to say it right now. 1,500 points of heresy could be very achievable for £150. In terms of models and paints and having the army you still need the books and all that don't get me wrong but that's the same for every game um so i want to prove a little bit that heresy is not difficult to get into which it isn't it's so easy to get into find a local player they might have two legions so you could probably even just play using one of theirs to begin with and uh yeah create something you know just just do it it's such a fun game it's such a lovely lovely models from forge world and Games Workshop have obviously released Kalth and Prospero, making it that much more accessible. 
So there's one thing I want you to take from this. Um, Heresy is easy, dead easy to get into, and it's so worth it. The community is spot on. The um, obviously the models are stunning. The setting, the setting of the Heresy itself is just unbelievably cool. So really, you know, I won't say there's no excuses because obviously if you don't like it, you don't like it. But if you would, if you are interested, just take the plunge because it will be that much more fun than you think. Um, so on that note, on that nice and positive note there, uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Of course, don't forget to stay uh, clued in for the streams. Follow us on Facebook. Um, we'll have everything up there. No doubt on the day we'll be sending out links to various individuals and posts and groups and so forth. Uh, who knows, might end up just trying to really get it out there and push it out there. It is for charity, it is for canine partners, so it's obviously there's a nice cause behind it and all. Um, but hopefully you find... Uh, you found this helpful, and hopefully we'll see you on the day. Uh, but until then, bye for now.